Good morning, Ardo. We are in a Zoom conversation uh, between uh, the Netherlands and Estonia. How are you? Good morning. Uh, feeling great. I mean, uh, it's getting darker outside. Uh, it's the time of the year, but I'm feeling good and we have definitely a lot of a lot to do. You are the co-founder and the CEO of uh, Ampler, electrical uh, bikes, e-bikes um, from Estonia. Um, you are already in, in, in the west of, uh, of Europe, but what are your plans to do with the bike here in, in the Netherlands? Um, yeah, we've been growing pretty fast for the past almost six years now. Uh, we started from, from Germany, which suited really well our bikes and our plans, and we've been pretty focused on that market. Uh, but now recently also looking a bit, bit outside of there because our goal is to put as many bike as many people on our bikes and uh, i think netherlands is a really interesting market uh, i like how the country treats uh, cyclists and with all the infrastructure which is like world famous for everyone so uh, we hope to also reach more people there and to see more amplers on the road in a way i wish that the whole world would go in that direction and i i also believe that a really good bikes and I believe ampler bikes could uh, be one tiny piece in the puzzle to make uh, cyclists uh, or cycling the, the main means of transport everywhere. I think this is a place where we can grow the fastest because uh, by all means we are still a small company. Uh, this year we're probably assembling roughly 6,000 bikes but in the role of cycling and in Europe it's it's a tiny number so we have to it uh, started bit by bit, um, but yes, I think our learning curve has been really steep and, and doing it Germany so far, we have learned a lot about our customers, what kind of bikes do they actually need. And uh, at the core of Ampler, there's a really this purpose-built mentality to build products that work and matter. And uh, I believe the bikes uh, as they are now, they can well be used also in Netherlands. Um, Maybe talking about uh, some of the few differences we have maybe experienced or uh, what we believe is that in places uh, Germany has hotter weather and also more hills. So that might uh, affect uh, e-bikes being more reasonable for also younger people. As of uh, Netherlands, with all that great infrastructure and relatively flat ground as well, then uh, the physical barrier is somewhat smaller, uh, let's say for regular people. And I think that's what has also driven the e-bike market for even more elderly uh, in the Netherlands. But I think it's, it's at the moment, it's moving really greatly in the mainstream uh, direction. So it, it's, I, and I hope that we are not going to talk too much soon about e-bikes and regular bikes, but we are we can talk about that as a united way of just cycling. Your feeling of riding an e-bike, the difference and the the experience, what was it like? It, it, it was pretty amazing, to be honest. Uh, and I think it goes well here that Ampler was not started uh, with the aim of like doing big business or building a company or not even changing the world. It was just three friends and engineers who were really interested in a concept. Uh, one of their friends uh, was a really amid like cyclist. Uh, I at the time was a professional motocross racer, so much more involved with motorcycles. And this was something that clicked, uh, clicked the three founders that it's a, just a cool concept. Uh, I had never ridden an e-bike and they were definitely not common in Estonia also at that time. So we just started looking into what, what what it is and after looking at the bikes that were available which were pretty expensive and also pretty ugly let's say uh, we wanted to build one because uh, we we spent our free time in a garage building stuff so that was our way of doing stuff and uh, sometime after that when the first bike for the first time actually worked then the feeling definitely was amazing so it's it's just even though it was not that powerful, I was used to riding powerful motorcycles, then it was just uncommon though. Like you didn't expect the bike to be riding this way. 
and it, it really felt like flying and that's there was something really special uh, about that feeling we saw our friends our family my grandparents going around this village with the bike with a huge smile on their face so there was something special and i uh, i think i wasn't really I didn't know what it even was because I've been riding a bike for a long time. I've been riding really fast and powerful motorcycles for for a long time, but there was something in the concept that worked. And uh, pretty often, even today, we see people for the first time riding the bike, and they feel they feel special. And I really hope that you're going to feel the same way uh, after jumping on. I think I will send you a, a, a picture with a big smile when I'm on it. <laughs> um, you. You, you, you're no longer in a, in a garage, you are in a, in, in a factory in Estonia, a big office a company. Um, tell me something about the, the way it's been assembled, the, the, the factory. How, uh, how is, the, is, the, is, the, is the bike built today? Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, again, it goes a lot about how it all started. It started with just three engineers. Uh, we are product-minded people. Uh, we love our bikes and they were only built because we like them so much. Um, and uh, I think it's been in the core of Ampla that we want to do things ourselves. And that's why the company has grown into really a vertically integrated one. So uh, we do a lot of product development. We assemble all of our bikes ourselves. We go directly to consumer. We do our marketing, our software development, the service flagship store, everything in-house. Um, and, and as of today, assembling bikes uh, even in europe uh, even more in your own factory is not that common actually as and uh, but um, and i think it's not the cheapest way or the most efficient way and but that has not been the goal it's about learning in the process and having a lot of control over assembly uh, having control over quality and making sure that all the bikes that we send to our customers they are perfect and um, the assembly itself, um, we, what, what we don't do is we don't uh, um, like process raw materials. So after the components are like, developed and we have suppliers all over the world to supply the components, but the assembly is done from the very, from, from the very beginning until the bike is ready in the Yuri factory here in Estonia. And it involves quite a bit of manual labor um, but it's it's a nice process. Uh, it's you just assemble clean and high quality components, so it's fairly uh, fairly fun. Uh, all the bikes are being ridden uh, on a test track before they are shipped, and um, yeah, it, it's also a huge like process in the making. So uh, for the past five years, and we are planning to continue it. Uh, we've been doubling our um, assembly uh, capacity every year so for the next year again a double for from six thousand so it's always processing in changing um, new processes coming in new machines or tools how to make it more efficient uh, and high quality and um, definitely one of the funnest processes uh, in all in, in all of it yes uh, a little bit ab about yourself, your co-founder and CEO. W what's your daily, when you step on your e-bike from home to, to the factory, uh, uh, to the office, what, what, what is your daily task? What, what do you do? This has also tremendously changed over time, of course. Uh, when we started, it was all about the product. Uh, it ha uh, has somehow turned out that uh, I was uh, from the beginning more involved in the electronical side. So dealing with batteries and motors and motor controllers and all that. Uh, there has been a constant shift towards uh, general like running the company. So uh, I'm still uh, somewhat involved in the product development side, but it's mostly now under the hands of another co-founder, Hannes, uh, who just today is flying to Taiwan to meet a lot of suppliers there and uh, deal with the product. Uh, so. I'm still keeping my hands that's somehow like dirty. I like to be in the factory and uh, in discussions uh, and like about the product and also assembly and all that. But uh, mostly also dealing with 
regular stuff like uh, just managing people, teams, setting uh, setting goals, making sure that everyone is uh, well informed, and we are we are moving in the right direction, united with the 75 people we have as of today, yeah. and. Um, it's also been exciting and I think it's also been a huge, huge learning curve uh, from myself as well. Um, I didn't have in-depth experience before Ampler. Uh, I was I was a professional motocross racer. I was managing my team and I was uh, I had studied um, mechatronics in, in university. So I had like a bachelor's degree. So I had like something in the base and I always had an entrepreneurial spirit but there has been so much to learn and it's it's an ongoing process. Uh, and I think this is, this it's already in the culture of Ampler. We don't know all the answers, but we are willing to go for, to go for long to find the ones and make mistakes, learn from them and do better. And it's been a great journey. It's maybe still the way of thinking uh, when you were in the garage. We have a problem and we want a solution. Definitely, and I, 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 I'm really happy that we've been building Ampla in a way that, in most cases, we have the ability to fix things. So, uh, and that's one of the biggest um, pros to doing a lot of things in house. So, with the learning process, uh, we we keep the knowledge in in our in our team. So we are capable of doing better decisions in the future. And if something goes bad, we have the leverages uh, to change things. And uh, even more in the difficult times of today with the coronavirus, then uh, having this flexibility and the ability to make decisions, uh, it makes our life easier.